Hey folks, and welcome to the Pythnotic Symposium for the 1st of August 2020. And my apologies for not getting more of these out. As some of you may know, we relocated. We moved from Bali, Indonesia, and now we are in Mallorca, Spain. And so we were running around looking at houses, and we finally found a house which is lovely and so we have, we've moved into the house a stone throw from a, from my boys school and now we're unpacking so it's been a very very hectic few weeks but um, now we see the the light at the end of the tunnel um, but today I'm just going to talk a little bit about uh, some updates coming to the supply and demand software and also to the, the currency strength expert advisor that I'm going to be giving away for free to members and I've decided that members who have been Pipnotic subscribers for at least six consecutive months will be able to get the expert advisor for free or people who have signed up for at least six months via the either the the half year or the yearly membership and the reason I'm doing this is because I would like people to have spent time using Pipnotic software before they are allowed to use the expert advisor and this is because it's very important that the fundamental concepts of currency strength are understood on a pretty profound level before we want to introduce any kind of automation but first of all let's focus on the supply and demand software there are a ton of updates that are coming one of which one of my favorites is is this one here where we have uh, the software now showing areas of supply and demand that have been consumed we have been doing this historically, but now I've changed it so that we have the areas that are shown on the chart until a candle closes above or below an area of supply and demand. And so now we actually have three kinds of rectangles. We have the solid rectangles, which are the fresh areas of supply and demand. We have the dashed rectangles, which are tested areas of supply and demand. And then we have the dotted rectangles, and these are the consumed areas of supply and demand. And so this one here is fresh. This can be traded. This one here has been tested, and this one um, has been tested and consumed by this area of demand. And this is important to, to show because essentially when we trade supply and demand, we want to know which area of supply or demand is responsible for consuming opposing supply and demand. This is really important. And without this, we don't really know where to start our analysis. So what we'll typically do is we'll look for, for example, a situation like this where we have an area of supply here. It was tested. Price went above it. Uh, this candle just here closed above it. So you want to say, okay, where is price going to have a bounce at? Well, then you want to backtrack, okay? And so you, you typically look for, so we have this area here. So price went this far below this area of supply. And then you want to look for price to move an equal distance beyond that area before we can think this is a nice area. Okay, and this more or less happened. And so when this happens, then you want to look at the origin of the move that consumed uh, this supply here and the origin would be somewhere in here so this would be the area that we would target to buy um, okay because this is the origin of the move that moved through this area of supply okay and it's just really important to be able to see where that area was consumed because you can see it happened here but there's no demand in here this is the origin of the move that moved through it okay and we have this one here you can see this one is tested price went through it but we would not manage to close above it so we leave it on the chart because because um, we found enough liquidity bearish liquidity at and beyond this area of supply to hold price and move it lower okay the same applies uh, for this here this area of supply price went up we did not manage to hold above it uh, this is the candle that did it the origin of the move that moved price uh, through this area is down here so this is the area that we would look um, uh, to buy it. Okay, price came back to that area pretty much and then we moved through. Okay, so this is really, really important. Okay, so we have three areas of supply and demand and now we also have another setting which I think is pretty important and that is max accumulation. Okay, currently the default setting is going to be set to five well, on this current dev version but you can say well I only want to look at areas where price accumulated or distributed at the area for one period before it left. And you'll notice that a lot of these areas are going to disappear. See that one disappeared. Here we had um, this one here um, is left. We had one period of accumulation distribution, one period of distribution. Um, we had one period. We had one period. 
one period, one period. And so this is going to really scrutinize uh, these areas. It's going to allow us to identify areas where price didn't hang around in the area very long. Price was up here and we left very quickly. Then price came up, we went a little bit through and then we really moved south. Okay, and so this is an area that we could consider to be pretty strong. Okay, so we have that area as well. And I'm also toying with volume, which I haven't quite figured out how to solve just yet. Well, we're going to look at volume. So if we have a look at, let's look at this area here. I'm just going to put a vertical line before, before this one and a vertical line after the candles that left. One, two, three, four. So this is where that candle will go. And so I want to look at the area of distribution. It's this candle just here. And I want to see an increase in volume uh, here. Okay, so I want to see an increase in volume after this area of distribution has formed. Okay, and you can see that we had an increase in volume here, which is great. And so you can see that, um, I mean, this is a pretty decent area. And this is this candle here. And the candles that went down are moved away. So this is going to be that one. One, two, three. So you want to see an increase in these three candles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an average of the number of candles that is specified in the configuration as the release period. I'm going to take an average of the of the volume. I'm going to compare it to an average of the volume in the area of accumulation or distribution. And I'm going to ensure that um, the volume for the move away is higher than the volume of the area of accumulation or distribution. Because this is going to show us an acceleration in buying or selling. Okay, so that's what we're um, that's what we're currently looking at. But I haven't had any time to do anything but move and unpack and stuff like that. And so we've been um, I'm pretty behind. So those are some of the updates that are coming out. Uh, it's pretty exciting. I look very much forward to uh, to getting this update out to everybody. Um, and then we have this one here, and this is the currency strength um, robots. And currently we have the histogram, which we all use. And the histogram is really good. It's very powerful and it's doing stuff that's uh, pretty remarkable. And what it's doing is it's essentially showing us where we can expect price to turn around. And it's using extreme deviations in currency strength to tell us this. Okay, so it's just looking for difference in strength between two currencies, so a histogram to be moving into very extreme readings. Okay, and so this is the extreme reading just here when price came to this area just here, we were starting to move into very, very uh, negative uh, currency strength territory here. So there's an anticipation that on this time frame, the price is going to begin to move higher. And so we have the American dollar is going to pick up in strength and the Swiss franc is going to uh, move down in strength. If we have a look at maybe a couple of other examples. Um, here we have another one here. This is a trade that I'm currently in here where we had price poke in to this area of very positive uh, currency strength um, and it happened just here and so the robot would have pulled us in the trade on this white candle just here and it would have sold just there because this is where price poked into it okay and so now price we can expect price to move down we have a very strong pound we have a very weak uh, dollar and obviously this behavior is not sustainable for extended periods of time so we're expecting the price to um, to move back into the mean okay and last time price was I mean when last time price reached these very high levels we were here and you can see we had increases in price we had decreases in currency strength between these two currencies and then price um, uh, thereafter sold off okay and then um, and the robot is scanning uh, all currency pairs at all times and it's identifying uh, currency pairs that are setting up similar to the to the scanner here where we have for example the alarm instead of the alarm going off the expert advisor is going to open a trade for us okay and so if we just turn this on for a second let's say we want to scan everything from the weekly to the hourly we want to scan all time frames and all symbols I'm just going to flick that on and see what happens and I haven't had my computer on for a couple of days because um, because we've been so busy and so I'm pro I probably have some invalid currency strength data but we'll just let this run for a second okay so now it's run and we have some uh, results so the American dollar Swiss franc on the daily chart so let's bring that over here let's go to the daily chart and it's saying yeah 
it's looking like it's time to buy. And so the robot will see this and say, buy American dollar Swiss franc. We have this, the British pound Kiwi. Let's see what that looks like. Here it is. And this is on the four hour chart. And this is distribution. So it's looking maybe like it's time to sell. Yeah, and so it's also doing this at a point where we have a pretty nice release. Okay, so it would have got in uh, just up here. And that's what we have there. And we have the pound Japanese yen. And this is on the hourly chart. So let's go to the hourly chart. And this is distribution once again. And here, price poked into it on this candle here. And so now it's getting, it's reaching some pretty uh, positive areas. And if we zoom out a little bit, let's see if this is happening at area. Now you can see that this is, this is reacting at a pretty high area, at a top here. Okay, so price is poking into that. We have extreme readings here in the, in the histogram. And so we can expect price to wriggle south from there. Okay, so that's what we have there. And so this is essentially what it's doing. And so what I've been doing is uh, putting the robot on and, uh, and just letting it do its thing, relatively big stops. And so I just let the trade get filled and it's been doing really, really well. So it's pretty exciting. And again, that's for members who have been members with us for, um, for at least six months or sign up for a, a six month membership. Okay, well, I'm gonna leave it to that. I'm gonna get back to uh, hanging up things, but uh, thanks for watching.